In this video, I will share with you how to rapidly repair your trauma response in real time using heart rate variability. And follow this video till the end and you'll see that these exercises work not only for trauma, but is deeply beneficial when dealing with everyday threats, such as navigating traffic, or when you're getting impatient when someone is running late, or simply expanding your capacity for compassion when someone makes a mistake. We can deny that we are surrounded by problems and pretend that life is going on as normal until trauma comes to the surface. And uh, to be clear, no one is immune to trauma. Some of us are simply better at hiding it than others. And even if you have worked through your own trauma, someone you know hasn't. And sooner or later, this ends up blowing up in your face. If you're looking for comfort information, you won't find it in this video. What we will focus on though, is what will get you rapid results in real time. If you have been following the Build Your Brain series so far, you will know that the brain uncouples itself from the here and now using feed forward processing to cope with the tension of not knowing what is going to happen next. And this leads to false expectations and this is the source of disappointment, uh, unconscious biases and self-induced suffering. I've linked parts one and two of the Build Your Brain series in the show notes below, so be sure to check this out. And to really understand how to repair subconscious trauma, let us first take a moment to consider the remarkable ability of the brain to time travel. In this moment, you can travel back in time to memories that you hold dear. You can travel forward in time and imagine your dreams to life. Yet this remarkable ability of the brain comes at a cost to the body. While the brain time travels, the body is unable to do so and runs the risk of being out of sync with this moment. Traumatic memories of the past deceives the body into reacting as if the threat was real. And this is how trauma is inherited by the body. And you can observe this trauma in action if you are lying awake at night going over and over again about something upsetting that happened during the day. Or when you're feeling fidgety and are unable to concentrate on what you need to. Or when you're simply feeling a sense of unease when you speak about the past. There are two main clinical approaches to working with trauma. The first is medication and commonly includes selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. And when the FDA approved solution does not work, we call the patient's treatment resistant. Yet, Consider for a moment that the brain has a hundred billion neurons and a hundred trillion synaptic connections in a constant state of flux. To think that we have control over this moment-to-moment -moment neurochemical cascade is an exercise in futility and often results in long-term side effects. The second form of treatment is talk therapy and can be supplemented by some form of hypnotic state, for example, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or EMDR, trauma release exercises and somatic experiencing. These approaches are largely dependent on the track record of the practitioner and you find one that you gel with, this can be instrumental in planning for withdrawal when coming off medication. If you are doing all the right things and struggling nonetheless, maybe it's time to consider a different approach. When the nervous system is dysfunctional, it's a key indicator that the brain and body are out of sync. When time is playing tricks on the mind, the body experiences a mental anomaly due to no fault of its own. We often hear practitioners say, be in the present, here and now. Why do they say this? What do they mean? Trauma is simply the replication of past experiences that debilitate your ability to respond in the present. Fortunately, nature has designed a biological mechanism for us to be able to negotiate this conflict with the moment. Our heart rate variability, or HRV, is single-handedly responsible for the moment-to-moment -moment neurochemical changes that happen in the brain. And uh, it's no secret that changes in our heart rate influences blood flow to the brain. This is what gives rise to the blood oxygen level dependent signal, or bold signal that we use in functional MRI. And uh, we now know that 85% of the information in the vagus nerve is going up into the brain. But what is controlling this organ-generated information? 
Put simply, when our heart rate changes, so too does the allocation of metabolic resources. For example, we lose our appetite the moment we are struck by heartbreak. And this is a legitimate threat because love creates a sense of belonging and when it is suddenly lost, it is the biological equivalent of being kicked out of a tribe or being rejected by your own family. The rhythm of the heart determines whether we sink or swim. And when someone is on SSRI medication optimized for happiness, they may not experience the full depth of a heartbreak and miss the opportunity to grieve. The process of grieving is an essential step in recovery and when skipped, can result in the disorganized, unresolved attachment type. And you can learn more about attachment types in the video linked here. And it is not heartbreak that instills trauma, but rather our reluctance to feel deeply. No one is immune to survival. Some of us are simply better at hiding from it than others. So how can you feel so deeply yet recover so quickly? There is an interoceptive network within the brain that includes the brainstem, insula, anterior cingulate cortex and the posterior parietal cortex. And this network is dedicated to monitoring your internal homeostatic balance. And this is the communication between brain and body, between the autonomic nervous system and the central nervous system. And this can be measured using biofeedback devices and is known as vagal tone. So instead of accumulating a lifetime of trauma and then dealing with it in front of a therapist, what if you could use this network and repair trauma as it happens? You do this by using breath to decelerate the heart rate in real time. And as a general rule, you can breathe in through the nose and expand the diaphragm and breathe out through the mouth, keeping the exhale at least twice as long as the inhale. In my online course, I teach vagal breathing, which is a proprietary breathing technique that I developed from evidence-based neuroscience to trigger the nervous system to relax under threat. And you can click the link below and enter my free HIV masterclass and learn for yourself how clients are using vagal breathing to get results within a matter of weeks. When you slow down your heart rate, even under threat, you have all the time in the world to address the situation because in majority of the cases, the threat is not personal. Someone else just did not have access to the information that you're learning right now and has not yet learned how to regulate the nervous system in response to threat. By remaining in an internal state of harmony, you're not replicating past experiences that debilitate your ability to respond in the present. And this prevents the situation from getting any worse because it takes a long time to get through darkness, but it does not mean you have to keep re-traumatizing yourself. This is what it means to be present here and now. When we are under threat, cortisol is produced by the adrenal glands and indicates that the nervous system has transitioned into the sympathetic fight or flight response. When we relax under threat, something remarkable happens. Oxytocin is produced alongside cortisol. And oxytocin is perhaps one of the most powerful naturally induced antidepressants and creates a sense of openness, trust, and most importantly, compassion. The saddest thing is that when two people come together to make a relationship work with the highest hopes of feeling safe and secure, trauma tends to invade the space and speaks louder than love. So, so much pain and suffering can be avoided if we did not replicate the past to keep a relationship stuck in a trauma bond. The games the mind played was fun while it lasted but truth has a habit of flowing out of our hearts.